we can divide camera parameters into two types. Uh, the first set is intrinsic parameters. So these parameters are internal to the camera and basically we use them to relate an image point in pixels on the image buffer to a direction or array um, in the camera's uh, coordinate system. So we've looked at really um, the following image uh, intrinsic parameters, the focal length expressed in pixels, and the center of the image um, in, in the image buffer as well. Um, or we could have expressed, instead of the focal length in pixels, we could have expressed focal length in millimeters, but then we would have needed to know the size of a pixel in millimeters. Also, a uh, little bit later, we're going to be looking at lens distortion parameters. Um, where we can't use the pin, simple pinhole camera model, but we'll talk about that later in the course. The other type of camera parameters are extrinsic parameters, and these essentially define the position and orientation, or pose, of the camera in the world. Okay, other types of sensors in addition to, cam to these uh, monochrome cameras are color cameras. So here each pixel is a triplet of values, not a single intensity, but a uh, set of three v intensity values um, representing red, green, and blue. Or range sensors are common where each pixel value is the range to the nearest surface in the scene. Often that's the, um, could be either the Z or the distance. So range images are also called depth maps or two and a half dimensional images. And common types are structured light systems, which I'll talk about in a second, or time of flight, um, uh, such as LIDAR uh, systems. A structured light system consists of a camera, just a standard camera, and some sort of projector such as a laser line projector. So the, the laser is oriented and positioned at a known pose with respect to the camera. So it's shining light on the scene which is detected by the camera and using the process of triangulation the camera can determine the distance to that point. So over here we see the laser let's say offset horizontally by a distance B and pointing at an angle theta relative to the camera's uh, optical axis. So if the camera sees a laser stripe point at point um, in this direction at uh, image location little x, then we can solve for the position of the point in 3D um, capital X and capital Z and comes out to be this, which is uh, fairly easy to derive. Um, you basically write down the uh, just the standard projection, perspective projection equation for the camera, which is uh, x over f equals big X over big Z, and also this equation here relating the angle uh, theta of the laser to um, the optical axis. So that's tangent of theta is big Z over little b plus x, or cotangent of theta is, is this. So solving for x or z, um, we, can, we can solve for the value of z, for example. And plugging that in, we could also get the value of x and y. This is uh, an example I actually did at Martin Marietta a long time ago. I built a uh, laser light uh, stripe projector mounted on this pan tilt mechanism where the camera is offset with respect to that. And it was mounted on a robot that would scan these drums to get their shape. So by swinging the light stripe across the scene, the camera would pick up the points and assemble them into a 3D shape like that. The other type of range sensor is a time of flight system. So this consists either of a pulse system which measures the um, time of flight of a short pulse. So it fires a laser pulse at a target 
and uh, measures the actual time it takes to return. So that requires very accurate timing circuitry. Or another type is an interferometer, interferometric system, which uh, basically shines a, um, a, a beam that's modulated in amplitude onto um, an object and uh, measures the, um, the interference between that beam, the return beam, and a reference beam. So um, by, by measuring the, um, the, uh, what, the, the loss in amplitude, you can, you can determine the distance. However, there is an ambiguity interval in this type of system because, you know, of course, if you go beyond one wavelength, um, then you don't know if you're one wavelength or two wavelengths or, or et cetera. Finally, these types of ranging sensors often produce a amplitude measurement as well as a range measurement. So you get a, you know, a light intensity scene as well as a range scene. And Microsoft's Connect sensor is a type of system that does this. It's actually a structured light system that um, gives you a range image as well as an intensity image. Just to summarize what we've been talking about in terms of frames here. We actually have a number of frames uh, we've been dealing with, uh, starting with the world. So if the world is some three-dimensional coordinate frame, x, y, z, we often talk about the pose of a model in the world, okay? So that position orientation. The camera observes the model, let's say. It has its own coordinate system attached to the camera. Usually that's at the pinhole. The, the image is projected onto a two-dimensional plane, which we call the image plane. That would be like the CCD plane or the real image plane. That's two-dimensional. And that is digitized to an image buffer or frame buffer um, or a pixel image with the coordinate system typically in the upper left-hand uh, corner. So we'll be talking about this whole process of how to determine, given a frame buffer, how you determine the position of a model in the world.